It's Rob! Tony! And I'm Jeff. We're in gaming, and that's you! Hello gamers and welcome back to the end. I'm Rob, of course, and we will be picking up from, I believe we were at three wins with the Shaman deck we were running in our arena. We've got some new quests, let's check them out. Win two games with Druid or Rogue, Druid or Hunter, and then play three means it costs two or, two or less. Obviously, we'll probably keep this one. Um, I think we might play Druid in the next arena run. So, I, 60, 60 gold seems to be pretty good. 40 gold, not that much. So, we'll get rid of the 40. Deal 100, or deal 100 damage to enemy heroes. So, we can do that too. So, we'll pick up on where we left off now. So, we actually can do two quests with what we got going on now. That's a lot of quests. That's two. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, that's like two. Might, might even be five. I may be mistaken. <sighs> Tony, Tony, Tony. Your Pandora sucks, bro. Oh, fuck you, man. <laughs> I don't want to hear your shit. You don't have to listen to my Pandora. It's very low, so they don't hear it. So monetization doesn't go, oh, that's not your song. And then we're just like, we know. We know. <laughs> So we're looking for one drops, two drops, and three drops, but you guys know that already. What's so funny over here? Why are you giggling, mate? You have a... like, we're looking for one drop, two drops, three drops, like four, five, four. <laughs> <laughs> At least we got a two drop in this hand. We got it in our uh, the Gucci Berserker. And then we have a, this. We always know as soon as this plays, he just dies. Um, I've actually went on a rant about this guy, how this guy has actually never really lived on the field longer than one turn. He's Just like, for me all the time. It helps me go 0 and 3. So the problem here is if we play the Berserker, it's just going to die, but there's no other option. We have to send him to his death. <laughs> um, I wish we had a 3 drop, but we have a 4 drop. It, oh my fucking god. All right. So he coined out the Snow Chugger and the Jeweled Scarab on turn two, and then he's going to play whatever the Jeweled Scarab gets him on turn three. So this guy has a, how you say a man, the perfect curve. <laughs> um, we're going to passive here. Hopefully we get a Taunt Totem. Ideally we get Taunt Totem. We get a Healing Totem, which doesn't help us, because when we kill this, this was going to enrage, and then at the end of the turn, it's just going to heal this fucking thing back up. Like, that's just so sad. So I guess we should have put two damage on to the Snow Chugger, but then the Healing Totem would have just healed it up for one Giving it two health. I guess we're in the semi same situation. I guess we could have swung our Berserker into it because the following turn we could have Berserker. I don't know, mate. All right, Totemic or Burly Jaw Rock. We're gonna go this way. So now he's in the dilemma if he wants to use his passive on our five ones and our one ones. Um, but then he only has two mana left, and that'll give us a really nice curve into our five drop and our six drop, because he won't be able to really play any creatures, because he'll want to get rid of these, um, want to get rid of the cards that have one HP. So it's more so that was bait more than anything. Like See, Novice Engineer doesn't do anything for him. And then next turn we throw down the... Actually, I kind of like the Totemic more so than the Raider, because the Raider requires us to... It's more like a turn seven play, and we don't have a turn seven play in our hand. So I'm actually going to throw... If we get Flame Tongue Totem, we want it to be right here, because it'll be in between these two. Alright, so we got a not-so-good totem, and again, a not-so-good totem. So, I suppose we're going to swing this into here, because then, if not, then he could just use his ping and kill off our 3-2. Because he just swing his 1-1 into our 3-2, and then ping it for 1. So this is just a little bit better for now. Even though we wasted 3 damage to kill a 1-1, it's still, eh. And we're still a couple turns away from Flame Strike, so it's not too bad. So the hunter is not that powerful, and he's going to ping off the uh, this. If we if we wouldn't have killed that one one, our um, totemic would have died. So the doom hammer is really nice, but I think we're going to play that on turn seven, so he can combo with our passive. It's better just to fill out the curve completely. Um, yeah, I would rather use it when we can use something else with it, because if we play it, then we're off one mana. So we're going to kill off this. Um, we're in flame strike, strike range no matter what, whether we attack with our 3-2 or our 3-4, so might as well just keep it like this. So if he does his flame strike, he'll just ping this 4-5, and then he'll play like a 4-drop or a 3-drop. So he's actually going to silence it, okay, and Annoyotron, and then ping. If he pings the 4-5, he's got flame strike. So he didn't ping at all. Okay, interesting. So we're going to Doom Hammer here. Um, then we can Jeweled Scarab. Get a three drop in our hand. Ooh, wow. 
Elemental Destruction and or Harvest Golem. I think Elemental Destruction, just in case we need any whoopsie spots. <laughs> you giggling there, mate? What's well, so funny? All right, so we're gonna kill off his 3-2 with our, fuck you, man, I can hear you giggling over there. And um, we're gonna swing four to the face. So this way, all of our creature live. Tony's losing it over there. <laughs> he's, he's holding his mouth. He's starting to cry. I don't want to tell him about the yum yums. I was wa okay. So I was watching one of the videos that we had done, or I had done previously, to see um, make sure the audio was lined up and there was no humming in the background. And I happened to go on a spot where I play a Tuskar Totemic. I'm like, do big things, Tuskar Totemic. Make sure we get what is it? Morning yum yums or something? I was like, make sure you get your morning yum yums. I was like, yo, what the? F I say some stupid shit sometimes. Morning yum yums. I was like, are you kidding me, mate? Has it storms? All right, so we're going to kill off this uh, Sludge Buster like so. We're going to swing. We're not going to swing our Totemic into the 1-2 because that will actually kill our Totemic. So now we're going to use our Raider, and I wit. I thought we had room for one more passive in here, but we don't. And now if he Flame Strikes, that was a huge misplay because now this actually doesn't... Oh my god, it would have lived. Why? This is what I'm saying. Raider always dies the second you play it. And that was my mistake that it died, but I'm going to pretend like it wasn't. So we're going to kill off his 4-2. Uh, I feel like throwing the... We're going to throw the Tessar Totemic on the left here and see what happens. Oh, Totem Golem. Really nice. That's a lot of applesauce. And then we're going to swing for 8 so ideally, he does not have a flame strike. If he has a flame strike, my entire field is dead. Not that I played into it whatsoever. You would <laughs> I would never fill my field up with a card. So if he gets a blizzard, um, that's a shame. Is this for YouTube? Uh, yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. That's Pornhub. That's for Pornhub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you see me on this free-to-play account, it's not... Obviously, if I'm going to be playing this account and showing you everything, every time I'm on this account, it's going to be for YouTube. So, just keep that in mind. And also, if you want to add me, I always throw this in the video. It's Warshak, FTP, and then the little money, or not money sign. <laughs> Jewish automatically think of money signs. Um, it's the number sign and then 1838. It's not 1738. Don't confuse yourselves. 1738. No, it's 1838. God damn it. <laughs> I am bad. We won though. What did, what spell did we get? Oh, claw. I want to play Druid. I think Druid will do very well. I have like a good a good feeling for Druid right now. But we're obviously playing Shaman, so we can't play Druid. What did this guy say? Cool. Okay. <laughs> Not, uh, well, thank you for spectating. Glad to have you. Uh -oh. <clears throat> Alright, well, we were just mentioning Druid and we're gonna go against a Druid. How exciting. And has anybody, like, noticed how buff all of the heroes are? Not not I, but they're pretty fucking buff. Like, Thrall's bicep is a good portion here. Like, look Jeff at that. Actually is, Jeff is actually afraid of Malphite because of how muscular he is. <laughs> I was afraid of Malphite and I thought I was Why are you mad at Malphite? There's no, there's no elf ever. <laughs> he's not an elf. He is an elf. He's, he's, a, a, wood, he's a woodland creature. He's a night elf. Yeah, he's a big night elf. <laughs> I've never seen an elf that huge. I've never seen an elf with what looks to be horns and a green beard. But I don't complain. Stormforge Axe is like so broken here because this guy gets buffed. We can kill off his knife juggler and we swing for two. Like, what possible play could he have? Like, that. Ugh, it's disgusting, bro. I wish we wouldn't have drawn both our axes, but that's okay. So even the claw, no, he can use his passive too, and then I'll have it three attack, and I'll actually be able to kill off our tunnel truck. We actually don't even have a play for next turn, because if we had three mana, if we didn't overload one, we would coin into the tomb spider, but we actually just have two mana. Oh my goodness gracious, but we can actually coin into the totemic. Gee willikers, this is insane sauce. So next turn we have four mana, so we can actually play the tomb spider and our court ma cult master. So in I in ideal situation, he plays a card in which our uh, weapon and our one one can kill off. 
Okay, it's going to take both our creatures, but that's fine. So we're actually going to draw two from this play. So we're going to play this. We're going to kill off the Totemic. We're going to draw one. We probably should have attacked first with our Totem just to see what we would have gotten. Uh, but this works out fine. The card advantage we get here is insane. Uh, okay. So he has five cards to our six, two on field with a weapon that only really has one durability yet. So I really don't count that as like a full card. And hopefully this recording works and the audio is everything is okay. We've I've been having a really bad time with audio lately. Like just, I don't understand how. Like things that shouldn't happen are happening. Like I'll record a video. Like right now I'm recording separate audio for me, separate audio for the game and a separate webcam like video audio. So I've got like four or five different sources of feed going through and they're all separate. They're not combined. So I can individually change their where they are to line things up appropriately and change the volume of each and still things seem to get messed up. Like it is insane. I've never like I've asked people about this and like, oh, I've never had that issue before. I'm like, it happens to me like four times a video. <laughs> They're just like, how? And I'm just like, dude, I have no fucking idea, mate. <laughs> All right, so I think we just swing with the four and we just leave this as is. Um, unfortunately, our Colt Master is gonna die. Um, but hey. And we could have played Silent Knight and Whirling Zipomatic, but it doesn't really put down as, a, as strong as a threat as this guy. Because this is a guy that's going to allow us to have plus two attack on our weapon. And not only do we have the weapon we have now, we have a weapon in our hand. We also have Doom, uh, Doom Hammer in our deck. So this guy is definitely one of, like, a really valuable card in this deck. So um, for Arena, a small tip for you guys. Uh, pretty obvious, but some people may not. You know, This guy is probably not that high. I know there's tier lists or something like that you guys call them, or there's websites that have cards in which it tells you which tier they're in. And this guy, I would assume, probably wouldn't be that high up on the tier list in most decks. Um, but because we're able to put three weapons in this deck, this guy, uh, like for this particular deck, happens to be a lot more valuable than maybe a different card that was maybe a two tier tier two card in comparison to maybe he's like normally a three or four, but he actually trumps that out Trump, um, because of the ability he gives and the way we have built the deck. So, just keep that in mind. <sighs> do we just play the Fen Creeper and go face, or do we actually, we can kill this guy off. Um, we only really have to take two, and we can set up, yeah, I think we can set up like a much better field this way because it gives him more things to worry about killing. I think we jeweled Scarab here, because there's a lot of great Shaman 3 drops. And now he'll enrage our weapon, we'll actually swing for four on our weapon, because we actually have another weapon in hand that he probably will not play around. And also next turn is probably going to be either the Stormforge Axe and the Fen Creeper, or we're just gonna buff up our creatures with everything. Um, buff up everybody two plus two, so our Flame Tongue Totem will actually live quite a long time. Oh, that's just not so small. All right. So I think we're going to buff, we're going to actually do what we said, we're going to Fen Creeper and we're going to zap matic and then the following turn we're going to give everything 2 plus 2 and we're actually going to win the game from there. So the question is, do we want to, so uh, yeah, we're going to swing with this and then we're going to play the zap matic right here and the Fen next to here. Because I wanted the zap matic next to the Flame Tongue, but you just got to make sure you attack with your Tomb Spider prior to putting it there because we would have missed out on 2 damage. And the Taunt Creature we want next to this as well um, because if he ends up swinging into it with a Charge Creature, we want this to have the most attack that is possible to soak damage to protect the Whirling zip matic Holy shit, that was a lot to say. <laughs> I'm not going to even try oh that. God, it's I'm just going to go all I'm over me. I'm just about to laugh very, 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 very hard. Uh, super hard. I don't know how well they can hear you with this mic. Um, when I was reviewing the other video, they could hear you semi-well when you were sitting right here and talking as if we were talking to that mic, which is the old mic. Hi, Mike. They don't use you anymore. Uh, Every rose has it. We use it when we <coughs> know ambient noise. Oh, he can saw me. Die. We were going to do 17 damage next turn alone with Whirling Zipomatic because of the uh, flipper card. So we're actually... <laughs> fuck you, man. <laughs> um... We actually have five wins right now. That's pretty good, considering no we're losses? just yeah, we're just trolling around right now too. I'm just like talking, Shop having too. a good hand. <laughs> yeah, I mean it is a pretty good deck. I thought the hunter deck we had last time was so good though. It had rhinos and tusks and horns, and it went zero and three. Okay. Not like zero and three with a close win, or just like zero and three. Just took a steady pounding. My freaking shaman deck that had the uh, Kelpies off in my first pick never get to play it. <laughs> 
Tony, uh, his first card in Arena was a Kel'Thuzad and some other decent legendaries. And obviously, Kel'Thuzad was probably the best pick in that situation. So you picked Kel'Thuzad, <coughs> and he never even got to play it once. Did you go in three, or did you go like one in three? Oh no, I went zero. Oh. Zero oh three, baby. This guy had a, like a constructed mech mage deck. Oh yeah, he was telling me. All right, so this opener that this guy went against Tony in Arena with was one second. He was gross. So he starts off with it was Coin Snow Chugger, right? No, co yeah, yeah, Coin Snow Chugger. No, it was Coin Mech Warper into a Snow Chugger and a Noiltron. <laughs> oh, what? Yeah. Sorry, I was thinking whether we should Stormforge Axe or uh, Coin into Passive, but then I was like, well, hold on to Coin for turn three, maybe this Boar thing. I don't fucking know. Turn one, Coin Mech Warper. Wait, turn two, Snow Chugger and Noiltron. <laughs> then he played one more mech for turn three. Turn four, Goblin Glass Mage. <laughs> wow, this guy is, uh, has a pretty decent opener. <clears throat> so if we attack into this, it's just going to die because it's going to take the one damage from its death rattle plus its one from its face. But there's really no way around that play unless we, like, next turn he's going to attack it in anyway. So we might as well just swing into it. It's just going to commit its little suicide genocide thing. And then I suppose we play Totemic and hope for decent totem. Every rose has its thorns. <laughs> we still have the coin though, which is nice. So ideally, we can maybe draw into two five drops because next turn we can play like a Fen Creeper or the other five drop and then play the other five drop after that, which would be really cool. Um, but the four and five drops after each other are, are, are powerful as well. But I would much rather have a two five drops. So is he going to bust out little spiders? That is the question. Or is he going to attack? Okay, so he attacks the totem, which is fine. Another totemic. <clears throat> this makes it a little bit harder because we can actually totemic coin into weapon, kill off his 3-4, and then have three cards on field and a weapon. Um, or we could coin into Fen Creeper, but then it leaves him the initiative with a 3-4 to possibly do so. Wait, yeah. Or we could just play this. I think playing the totemic and then coining into the weapon is fine because then we have a 4-drop to follow up next turn anyway. So I'm actually going to play the Totemic first to see if we can maybe get a Flame Tongue Totem, and we won't have to do that. So no Flame Tongue Totem. We have a lot of spell damage, but that really doesn't help us whatsoever. So we're going to do the original plan. We're going to kill off this, and um, even a Healing Totem would have been okay. Any other Totem, for a matter of fact, would have been fine. This is actually the worst Totem we could have gotten twice in a row. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Good thing you have lots of spells in there, right? Yeah, good thing we have lots of spells. I think we have one Crackle in this deck. Just one. I like this new. No, I don't. Good thing Allison doesn't watch. I thought this was gray and black at first, and then I noticed it's like a shade of blue, and I actually wear gray pants, so it doesn't really match at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to really say anything to anybody, even though I just mentioned it. 6-6. Six, six. <clears throat> well, can't play Bloodlust. Because if so, we could have sacrificed these two to kill that, and then weapon into this, and then swung face with that. But this leaves us to literally do nothing. I mean, we could summon... No, because then we can't even pass it when we summon three drops. Or we just summon this, and then we're just going to swing into this, bring him down to three HP. Because he obviously next turn he's probably going to kill off the Trog. If he doesn't kill off the Trog, I guess that's okay for us, because then we could Bloodlust use one of our Totems to kill off the 6-3 and maybe something else if he doesn't use the Spider to kill off the one drop Totem. I don't see this game working out well for us. We just haven't been drawing that great at all. Like, the two, the weapons are nice, but it's, we didn't get any of our early game creatures. Like, we've been kind of just like going back and forth. But I guess we did get both our Totemics, but like it gave us really bad Totems out of it. Wow, that's pretty good. Okay, so this was in our hopes. No, 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 kill a fucking toad. God damn it, you stupid little bitch. Well, we can lightning storm. Or we can, I don't really feel like bloodlusting. Bloodlust kills one card, but I don't know if I want to kill that one card. Should we just lightning storm, but then we'll uh, quickly. But lightning storm, what's the pop? Okay, okay. It's going to deal two damage. Ooh, four damage. Wow, I forgot that was it. Okay. Spell power I, I forgot that was a spell power totem. This guy? No, the other one. This guy? The one that you're, you're, the, this guy? The big card. That guy? 
Pick one of them. The one that looks like the upside down shield. I only have three cards in my hand. This guy? The hero? The hero? Yeah. This is Thrall. Why are you charging up the rock and die? <laughs> Why is the... I, th I was like, which card are you talking about? There's only three cards in my hand and none of, only one of them is green. But yeah, the Rasengan is a pretty powerful card. Can you use that? Yeah. Why doesn't he use it? I don't know. He's doing win like right now. What about the... What is it? The there's a, He like forms the Rasengan into different forms. There's like the blade one. The ninja star looking Rasengan. The... Rostin Shuriken. Rostin Shuriken. That motherfucker does work. Can Thrall do that? Thrall cannot do the Russian Jan Shuriken. He should probably learn how to do He would win more games. He would win more games. This looks good for us. He doesn't have... He played Jeweled Scarab. I don't really... Shop, like, Paladins have okay through to... Like, Muster for Battle comes to mind. Divine Favor doesn't help him here. Hammer of Wrath. Wrath sings. This is kind of bad for us. Um, I wish we could throw out the Raider and then passive, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Fen Creeper could be a little bit too defensive. Um, I think we're going to Armor Smith for now. Maybe we'll draw into one of our better weapons. We're going to actually keep the 1-1 one -one on the board to kill off some of his uh, little uh, Silverhand recruits or and or make trades with it. We also can still Bloodlust, which is a lot of damage that we could pump out. So next turn, if anything, we have uh, 8 mana, so it's probably going to be the Raider passive. We'll see what happens. Okay, this would be a good three drop he could get from his, uh... Ready, sir. Wow, that's really good for him. <clears throat> okay. Everything in our hand puts it puts us in an awkward curve, because if we do this and then summon Totem, the Totem doesn't really do much. I mean, everything in our hand is pass like, use the card and then passive. This, I guess this would be considered the biggest threat. I guess, maybe. Um, we really wanted to live though, so I think the Fen Creeper kind of puts up the, no, because it, hmm. Killing off the 2-2 is going to be the obvious first play here. And then that's left with this. If we summon the Fen Creeper, it has Allure Peacekeeper in that, and that swings it off, and then it has one left, so I think this is the play here. Because we still have a one attack creature that can kill stuff. We also have a totem. We don't want our Raider to die yet, because that's kind of like the big card we have. Like, as soon as that dies, we have nothing. I don't think we have too much left. Do we have Krakens in this deck? I think we might have two Norsey Krakens. Do we? I have to look at the deck list again after this. It's just an awkward play there, because no matter what play, we're going to be left with one mana crystal. At least next turn, we can combo. No, we don't even want to combo these two together, because we want to use this with our passive. I guess the more creatures, the better for Bloodlust. <laughs> the powerful possible stick. Yeah, so this is fine. No, he's actually gonna... No, 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 this should be fine. It doesn't look very fine. Never mind, fuck that. This sword is so good in Arena. Oh, man, this is bad. I can't do with all these two twos. And then this is gonna swing into this. Tuning fork. Um, so we're gonna kill off his... Uh, kill off his 4-1. I think our best bet is just to throw down her passive. Hopefully, I don't even know if there's another way to deal with all this. I think there's only one Chain Lightning in this deck. We have no Elemental Destructions. Yeah, once we kind of lose field control like this, it's just all downhill. <clears throat> this Sword of Justice put work into our soul. So does this Alor Peacekeeper. Those two cards combined together. Oh man, now this guy's gonna have four too. Yeah, this game's we're getting toasty, boys. We need elemental destruction. An elemental destruction would save us again. Uh, Lightning storm would do pretty fine too. That's why I didn't want to use it earlier, but we did. Um, Hungering dragon cannot summon a doomsayer, so that really doesn't work there. <laughs> Um, we summon this, it's just going to die to this 5-1, so might as well give him a 1-drop. Maybe it'll help us? Definitely not. Healing Totem? Hell yeah, draw one card. I'm not even going to be... Oh, it only works on my side of the field, but either way, we lost. I thought the Healing Totem was going to heal Ooh, his... Yeah, we have no way to deal with all those cards. Alright, so what do we have here? We actually... No, we don't have a Kraken. It was the Hunter deck, I think, that had two North Sea Krakens. So our biggest card is the Volcanic Drake and the Sun Walker. All right. Now I know. No, 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 no. Why are we playing a normal game? We have time for one more solo adventure. 
No, why am I doing so one match? <laughs> we have time for one more arena. Jesus. So our first loss was at five and one. Okay. So as long as we get to seven, then we'll make our profit and everything will be all right. The last two arena games, though, our runs, we did not make a profit. What was it? Oh, and three. And then I think it was like two and three or three and three or four and three. I know it wasn't. It was close, but not that close. So we just need two more wins and everything will be fine. Feeling like probably, uh, I haven't played against a rogue, but mage is probably going to be more like it. We're getting like up to the win. We're up and we're getting to the point where um, the arena classes matter. So like you won't really see anything. You won't see any warriors really, or a druid and things like that past like five to seven wins. Hey, there's a mage. I mean you do, but it's just not as often. Like when you do like your first four wins with arena, or not first four wins, but your first four games. Um, you see a lot of, uh, there's a lot of different kinds of classes that you'll see, but in this situation, start get up there, we don't, we only see like the top tier classes, Paladin, Mage, Rogue, stuff like that. Um, do we keep the Hunter? We have better three drops, but we haven't had, we didn't have luck last game with creatures, so, yeah, this doesn't look good. I mean, yeah, this doesn't look good. Because no matter when we play the Fire Guard Destroyer, it's going to set off. Oh, my God. <sighs> Come on, man. Yeah, so on turn three, we coin in the Fire Guard. We can't play Tomb Spider. On turn four, it, we play Fire Guard. We can't play the Doom Hammer. I guess we could coin the Rumbling Elemental into the Tomb Spider. Oh, my fucking God. What is this? What is, how many four drop, one, two, three, we drew into all of our four drops, every single four drop. If we coin into the three drop, we have nothing next turn. So we literally just have to coin out our four drops and hopefully they live long enough, which they won't because he has a micro machine on the field. Come on, man, I don't need this kind of luck. Like this is just horrible. A flame waker? What is this bullshit? Is this ranked? Did I accidentally go into ranked? Crackle semi helps, but then it just sets us back another turn so we can't play a fucking four drop. I don't even want to play this game. This is just put me on tilt right now. This is lit this is horrible. We coin out the elemental and it's just gonna die to the micro machine and a ping. Turn one zombie chow, turn turn Michael machine, turn three flame waker. My hand consists of all turn four cards. And I, I'm pretty sure we only have like five four drops and we drew into four of them. Good. Within our first 23 cards. Right. Yeah. Mm hmm. So I guess it's Hundering Dragon next turn. I guess not. I, would, I want to say it's not too bad, but it's pretty fucking bad. Alright, Hungry Dragon, don't give him something too broken. 2-1 with Taunt. Alright. I guess that's better than the 2-4 that normally does 3 damage to itself, but in this situation, um, it would actually not take damage to itself because it was never summoned. It was summoned by another creature, so it would just stay a 2-4. It would never take the Battle Cry damage. So I'm going to make the assumption that that's a mere entity and or a counterspell. Recombobulator? Pro plays. Pro plays. All right, so we're going to Doomhammer probably these two cards and then swing our Drake into the 2-4. So if it's an effigy, we'll know. Not an effigy, not a duplicate. Killing off this. I almost have to... What does this put me at? This puts me at... Eight. Swing into Chow. I mean, I could, but then this card is going to be annoying. Yeah, we don't really have an option. I don't want to make the chance with a Frost Bolt. So he's going to swing one of his three twos in the Hungering Dragon. 
Next turn we have four mana. We're going to probably have to crackle one of the cards he plays, and then I hopefully we draw into a two drop, but we don't have any more heals, and we're going against a mage that does lots of damage. We're already, we're, yeah, we're pretty much already too low to make a comeback in this game. That start was that we had to have something. Like, what turn, we needed a turn two. Like, that was essential, was to have a turn two play. Whether it would have been a weapon or not, him having a card one through two, three and us having no card. Bad. Bad news bears. So we're gonna swing our weapon into his micro, crackle the three two. Another secret, so I'm going to make the assumption that they're bad. Duplicate. Effigy, okay. I thought it summoned another one. All right, so I'm gonna make the assumption. Hopefully, that's not. Well, whatever. A counterspell? Not a counterspell. Give me a taunt. Healing totem does not help us here. So whatever we summon next turn, we need to be able to kill. Do we have a zombie chow in this deck? Because that would actually help us. We summon a zombie chow, copies it, we kill it. We heal it. Fireball ping. Fireball ping. Ooh, commando, powerful card. K K K. Ooh, Cult Master, wow. All right, um, there's plenty of plays here that allow us to win. So we're going to play, we're gonna play this card right here. It's gonna have over five attack. Or not. I was gonna have, I thought this was a mere entity, so when this had more five attack, then I would actually going to kill it off and then kill myself in the process. But like, that, my Kamikaze didn't even work. That really makes me sad. Not even my kama kamikaze works. That's probably like an ice block. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, okay. All right, we're going to take a small break here, and we are going to hopefully not lose another game and at least get to seven wins. This deck can do it. It's just not with the hands we had. All right, see, look, I'm going to count how many four drops we had. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We drew four of them. How many two drops do we have? Well, one and two drops. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine. It's a lot more. Kinda. Anyway, guys, I will see you next time. Sorry, I got a little salty there on tilt, but we can see why two losses back to back hurts in arena. Because then it just puts you like at that phase where you're like, if I lose one, then it's like it's all over. But if you're like at one loss, you still got like that leeway at two, so it's not too bad. But this is this is hurting me. All right, anyway, see you in the next episode, guys. Of course, I'm Warshak, and happy whatever the hell day it is.